Hey, thanks for choosing Brainwaves. After the episode, take a look at our iTunes archive for other great content, and check out our new website at brainwaves.me. Now, on to the show. Welcome back. This is Brainwaves. I'm Jim Ziegler. Today we're going to talk about anti-epileptic drug interactions. I know, really exciting, so buckle up. In general, AED interactions with other pharmacologic agents are modest at worst. No drug ever really renders another drug useless, nor should one drug instantly make the other toxic. But you really should be aware of them, especially in patients with difficult-to-control epilepsy or if you plan to pass your board exams. As a med student, you're told that if you can distinguish the hepatic enzyme inducers from the inhibitors, you'll be alright. But like all things neurology, the answer is not so simple. Except maybe for selecting a novel anticoagulant for stroke. Pixaban. When thinking of inducers and inhibitors, You'll recall we're talking about the drugs that target the cytochrome P450 hepatic enzymes, but these drugs also target other hepatic enzymes like glucuronal transferases, which inactivate drugs like lamotrigine, valproic acid, and oxcarbazepine, and epoxide hydrolase, which breaks down drugs like carbamazepine. Let's take a minute to review the inducers and the inhibitors. As you know, the most important and really only inhibitor of the cytochrome P450 system is valproic acid. I remember it as a major inhibitor of the hepatic enzyme function because one of its major adverse effects is hepatic toxicity and hyperaminemia. So think of it that way. Valproic acid, liver inhibitor, liver toxicity. In contrast, the major inducers include the P drugs, P for promoter of liver function, phenytoin, primidone, and primidone's active metabolite phenobarbital, and also carbamazepine. I really can't help you there. You'll just have to remember that carbamazepine is an enzyme inducer on your own. And while I said that the impact of enzyme activation or inhibition is modest with these therapies, some drug levels can be enormously affected. For instance, patients on valproic acid, remember the inhibitor, patients who are co-medicated with an inducer may have a 50-75% to reduction in the serum valproate levels. Lamotrigine levels may also drop by 50% or more in the presence of an inducer. On the other hand, patients on lamotrigine or phenobarbital who are co-medicated with valproic acid may have a two-fold greater serum levels of lamotrigine or phenobarbital. Therefore, if you've got a patient on VPA and want to start lamotrigine, you must start the lamotrigine titration at a lower initial dose and increase more slowly than usual. Or if you've got a patient on valproic acid and you want to start phenobarbital, which has an astounding half-life of 80 hours in adults, serum phenobarbital levels may become toxic after several days or weeks at doses that you may think to be minuscule. That being said, thinking of these drugs as either inducers or inhibitors really limits your understanding of their pharmacologic complexity. Distinguishing the inducers from the inhibitors will barely help you pass the med student's clerkship exam. You've got to take it to the next step. Primidone, as I've just mentioned, is metabolized by the P450 system into its active anticonvulsant metabolite phenobarbital. So as an inducer of its own metabolism, Increasingly greater doses of primidone may more rapidly escalate the serum levels of its active metabolite. The converse is true of carbamazepine, which induces its own metabolism, thereby inactivating it. So you've got to be careful with dose adjustments for each of these meds. There's also evidence that the quote-unquote inducers and inhibitors also act via various mechanisms at the level of the GI and renal systems, where they modulate expression of drug transporters, facilitating or inhibiting absorption or excretion. I'd like to take a moment here to pay special attention to women, in particular women on estrogen-containing oral contraceptives and pregnant women. Of the more clinically relevant AED interactions, OCPs are something you have to know backward and forward. If you know this, you're smarter than 95% of American neurologists and obstetricians. No kidding, seriously, only 4% of U.S. neurologists and obstetricians could identify the interactions between OCPs and AEDs, according to a 1996 nationwide survey. Granted, of course, that study is 20 years old. Lamotrigine is the main drug whose therapeutic and toxic levels are affected by OCP use. Lamotrigine, which is the broad-spectrum AED of choice for women of childbearing age and pregnancy, is more rapidly metabolized in OCP users. Serum levels of lamotrigine drop by about 50% in young women taking OCPs, 
or they may acutely rise by 200% during the, quote, pill-free week. So monitoring of drug levels is necessary in patients thinking about starting, stopping, or changing their contraceptive regimen. Conversely, some AEDs reduce the efficacy of OCPs, and these are the enzyme inducers, remember the P-drugs and carbamazepine, as well as lamotrigine, topiramate, felbamate, and oxcarbazepine. A lot of these interactions are dose and drug dependent, and we're not going to get into the details, but as an example, think of carbamazepine, which is a particularly potent inducer of OCPs and can reduce serum levels by 50% at normal carbamazepine doses. In contrast, topiramate and lamotrigine produce only a modest reduction in the effect of OCPs on the order of 20% or less. But topiramate is not a very significant inducer of OCPs until about 200 mg daily. Newer drugs like Aptium and Ficampa may also affect OCP levels in women. In addition to OCPs, pregnancy is all around confusing to me, and it certainly doesn't make more sense if your pregnant patient has epilepsy. Classically, as you know, lamotrigine levels are dramatically affected by gestation, especially during the second and third trimesters. I think that's near the end of pregnancy. In fact, pregnancy increases lamotrigine clearance by over 300%. But does this have any clinical consequences? The answer is yes. Absolutely half of patients will have a worsening in seizure frequency because of this. And after delivery, almost instantly, you should have a plan for your patient to dose-reduce their lamotrigine in order to prevent acute toxicity. Some investigators have recommended a 10-day taper back to preconception dosing levels, plus or minus an extra 50 milligrams to counteract the effects of sleep deprivation from having the child. You know you're not getting any sleep. Or you could alternatively cut the dose in half on postpartum day one and check a level after one week. Obviously, I'm not making any generalizable recommendation here. Each situation is unique and the schedule should be adjusted according to the patient and their individual pharmacokinetic profile. The best way to prevent sub-therapeutic levels during pregnancy and supra-therapeutic levels postpartum is probably to check lamotrigine levels in the serum on a monthly basis during gestation and then in the week postpartum and adjust the dosing when necessary. Oh my stars, have you read the news? It makes me blue, unlike everything in my electric dream. Okay, that was a lot, and we didn't even get into the interactions with non-antiepileptic drugs. While I'd love nothing more than to regurgitate a chart of interactions to you, I'm trying to keep these episodes short and sweet. So the bottom line is, if you're looking for a low-profile AED, I usually go with levetiracetam, gabapentin, and pregabalin, the latter two almost never being first line for anything epileptic. That's about all we have time for today for Brainwaves. I'm Jim Siegler, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to Brainwaves today. If you like what you just heard, you can find more related material on Twitter at Brainwaves Audio or contact us at bweditorialboard at gmail.com. Be sure to check out our iTunes archive for older episodes. This episode was produced by Jim Siegler. Music by Justin Warren. Join us next time for another edition of Brainwaves. I said I